Welcome to our first Strive Education conversation, bridging the gap between what's happening in digital media and the industry and what's happening in schools with students and teachers. I'm your host, Taylor Siebert, and our mission here at Strive Education is to deliver schools, students, and teachers digital media, curriculum, community, and resources for their classroom. And these conversations are an extension of that, bridging the gap. What's happening? What's happening with content creators, digital media creators that are in the industry making a living doing this to inspire students and give examples for teachers to showcase to their students in their classroom. And I'm excited to introduce Mike Sauter, a great friend, colleague on our team here at NEB Preps. He's been creating content for a very, very long time, over a decade, and has amassed over 30,000 followers on social media. He's a writer, he's a photographer, he edits videos. He now has a little bit of a team to help him do that. And he's part of our NEB Preps brand that we started. He's done it all. And so Mike, thank you for being on the show. Really appreciate it. You're a great example for students. I'm excited to uh, dive into your story a little bit. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, happy to be here and share. Um, I don't know if I go with knowledge. Um, Something. Maybe just yeah, some uh, knowledge isn't the word. I don't know what the word insight. is. Insight. Yeah, insight maybe is the word. Um, but if it knowledge slash insight, um, just kind of this is what I'm seeing as far yeah. as what's coming. I think that's important. What's new? So um, yeah. That's, that's awesome. As I mentioned, this show is brought to you and these conversations are brought to you by Strive Education for the teachers and students in our community. So we're thankful uh, to be launching this earlier this year and have a community going. Mike, I want to start with kind of why you started. Why did you start creating content on the internet? Yeah, um, started just a, from a Twitter account. Uh, so um, really started to bridge the gap uh, between uh, Nebraska high school basketball athletes because I just started basketball only first um, and the recruiting world. So I, I, I started it just as an idea of like, hey, why don't we have anything that is strictly dedicated to um, covering recruiting, covering high school sports, mainly from the recruiting angle again, um, and other states do. So that's why that that's that's why it started it has evolved <laughs> tremendously and uh like you said over a decade it, it has moved right and, and yep. very much so moved but that's why it started it, that's the the key was to hey there's this void here and i want to kind of fill it or walk through that void um and and initially the goal was hey i'm going to close the door behind me um but now I, I that that's not you know that's not the case it's hard to do that and so you saw what other content creators were doing mm -hmm. on the internet mm -hmm. via a Twitter account. Yeah. And you thought, hey, we could start that here. Mm -hmm. Did you have any background in creating content or writing or anything like that? Take us a little bit no. deeper into that <laughs> yeah. English teacher yeah, story, which I think yeah. is important There's, to share. I had, I, I always wanted to, I knew growing up, like I, I knew, I just knew growing up when I was in middle school, elementary school, love sports, watched all the time. Um, my ultimate dream was to be a sportscaster on Sports Center there you go. every night. Um, I, I would watch sports. Kinda like Scott Van Pelt, yeah. SVP right <laughs> yeah. now. Look at that. I would, I would watch replays over and over and over in the mornings of um, at of Sports Center when it was on. I mean, I would, j I would know everything. And my brother, even he's older than me, he would he nicknamed me Sports Center because it's all I would watch <laughs> on TV. Um, no, is that a nugget that no one yeah, knows yeah, on no the internet? No one really knows that. Yeah. So all right, Sports Center. Um, but that 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 was my dream. That was my goal. And then in high school, it was my junior year actually of high school. I had a teacher. Uh, I went, you know, journalism slash yearbook back then. Yep, we're talking same. like, you know, late 90s here. Dark room. So kind of looked like this room really where you're changed. developing photos. <laughs> yeah, really changed. Um, had a teacher that uh, wasn't real supportive of, of uh, I didn't feel that way, I guess, at the time. I had no, you know, writing experience. I, I didn't know, you know, what I was doing and um, jumped into um, this class and it was, and, and I'll vividly remember the conversation. It was, uh, I got a C on a paper and I was like, well, what, like what did I do wrong? And it was, I mean, it marked up like a all ton, red, all red, 
super red. And she basically told me like, Hey, you're, I don't know if this is ever going to be for you or if you can do this and all that. So I, I, I transferred out of that class after the first oh, semester. Okay. Once I didn't even make the it, like year was a year. Yeah. I, I was like, okay, I'm out of here. Like it just turned me off. It was not great. Um, not a great experience. It wasn't sports center. No, it was definitely not. <laughs> but you know, now that I look back at it, like it isn't all that glamorous of, you know, like we'll get into that, mm-hmm. but there's, it, yeah. Like you see the people on TV and this is what they do, but there's way more to it than just sitting there and reading a teleprompter. Um, so there's writing. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. there's a lot that goes into it. Oh. And frankly, like I wasn't, a, you know, I was high school, so I wasn't a great writer by any means. Um, but that was that was kind of it, it. Turned me off big time. But I still always had this dream in the back of my yeah. mind of like, hey, this is like this is this is what I want to do. And I found it again. Um, and, you know, it just took me a long time and a, m- a lot of jobs. Yeah, yeah. we <laughs> to, won't go through your to... LinkedIn profile. No, let's not. Uh, here today. But I do want to talk about kind of fast forwarding to this was a side hustle for you. Mm-hmm. And I think that's mm-hmm. important for students to understand that this wasn't a, you know, full time job of covering high school sports mm-hmm. right away. Mm-hmm. What did that transition look like? What what do you remember kind of doing? What other jobs did you have when you were doing this? Just high level. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sold advertising, was a telephone sales person, um, telephone, like an IT recruiter, um, did a handful of different jobs. Yellow book. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I sold, I tried to sell the the phone book, like to like put your kids. Come on. That was in like 2016. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. I was was talking about that. so it, it was a lot. I, I did a lot of different things because I I just kept f- trying to find the thing. Yeah. I just kept trying to find what I'm like, what am I pat like, what can I even like I need something. I need, I obviously need to make money. Right. I had been um, you know, five, six years, seven years into this side hustle passion project that took my focus away from what was, you know, paying the bills. Um, and it just, it, it was, it was just a lot. It wasn't working. I, I would, I would care more about this side hustle, kind of this passion that I had for sports and covering it in the state. And I just, I couldn't, you didn't have anything left in the yeah. tank for your full time. Yeah, job, I didn't, I did. Yeah. Um, which is dangerous, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, it also taught me, I mean, I, it taught me a lot of different skills though. I mean, I'm, yeah, you're talking about like, I was walking into doors of businesses and they had no idea who I was that I was coming, didn't know at all. Just cold, not even call, cold call is like picking up the phone and calling. This walk in cold walk in. Like, I'm (laughs) like, Hey, I'm here and I'm going to sell you this. No text. Hey, I'm on my way. No, nothing. This is not, yeah, nothing. And uh, got told no a lot and got mm-hmm. the door shut on me a lot. Um, but you just kind of got to keep going. And, you know, I, I think the lessons learned in it is, hey, like, if you are a lot of people think, okay, I'm going to start this Twitter account or this website or this podcast or this thing. Like, it, it is. And it's going to make a ton of money. Right yeah. Away. And I'm going to just right. be able to. No, you're not. Like it, it, it takes a lot of work and a lot of time. I'm talking, okay, so I would work from eight to five and then it would be go to a game at seven and go to bed at midnight, one in the morning because I'm working on, you know, after the game, Mm -hmm. I got to go home and, you know, work that way. And now (laughs) it's not great, but now that's, that's like my routine now is you built that habit yeah i have yeah. that habit now of doing i try to help i'm trying to help him break that habit just a little yeah. bit yeah it's hard it's ingrained it's, yeah. it, it's just an ingrained hustle. thing but that 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 key thing of i still had this passion thing man like mm-hmm. i still had this it was growing but it wasn't overnight 
And I wanted it to happen overnight. And everybody does. Yeah. But at the same time, it takes like, man, it takes a lot. Let's go to you built up this following. Mm-hmm. You were making a little bit of money, mm-hmm. I believe. And you developed a relationship with some yeah. folks at the, the World Herald, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, so, so take us through it, that. It was, it got to a point where, um, you know, it, it started from a really bad WordPress blog website where it's just words on yep. top of words yep. and on top of words. And then it evolved into a little bit nicer version of that. Then it evolved into like, okay, we can actually put photos on this website <laughs> with my phone. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Yeah. And then it evolved to, um, you know, okay, in order to, my, my wife was like, hey, this is taking a lot of your time and money, like of my own money. Yeah. I, what are we, you're at a breaking point yep, here. Yeah. Yep. After about three, four years of doing this. And so it, it evolved into a subscription, you know, part subscription, part free website. Um, and then I did a few camps and did some other stuff that uh, it, it then evolved into, okay, now it's paying for itself. Got it. I had um, a couple of part-time employees. We had about six or seven throughout the state. That And all we did was kind of cover games. We were doing similar things to what everyone else was doing, um, but we were also doing a lot of things that were different. Like if you go back 2011, no one was live tweeting scores of games. Right. I was the first that I know of in Nebraska to do that. I mean, like every quarter, here's the game. Quarter, yep. halftime, quarter, you know, end game. And, you know, who scored the most points, basically, because that's the yep. easiest thing. Now everybody does that. That's the expectation. Um when it, you're talking about sports and, and coverage of games, which right. I think is weird, like covering a game. People say, hey, thanks for the coverage. Well, <laughs> just like tweeting stuff at a game. It's not necessary. I don't consider that coverage. Coverage is like going deep dive it, it into depth, yeah. way more. But people are just so appreciative of like, hey, anything, right? Well, it just shows the evolution too. That's when we started streaming, right? right? 2010 and the demand, the technology, met then the demand for fans to want to know that mm-hmm. you know weren't there what's right? happening right now yep. yeah and, and what's happening right and, now. and and that's part of the reason why i started doing like tweeting out scores of games was hey what we have these tools we have these yeah. social media tools yep. why why should people have to wait until the morning when they pick up the paper or the 10 o'clock news at ten twenty at night when the sports comes on their local news why should they have to wait for that yep to find out who won the game of the rival across the street, right? Or, yeah. whatever, you know, down the road or in the other town or, you know, anything. So you've been t- built up yeah. a bunch of value, social capital, yeah. as they call it now, followers, some subscribers, um, and World Herald offers you a yeah. job. So 2017, um, I, I was, I was kind of, timing was great, mm-hmm. right? So the sports editor at the time, his son was in high school, he saw that they would be like they would get in a car <laughs> and with he would take his son and his kids and his his friends kind of home from a game or something and they would get in the car and if they saw that I was there they the first thing would be like oh what did Sauter say about yeah him? yeah that's cool and so it like made him kind of mad <laughs> he's like what why is this guy who is this guy I need to know him, like all that so. Um, 2007, we developed a relationship a little bit before that, but in 2017, um, well, I guess the winter of 2016, um, he kind of approached me and said, it was a fall. He, he approached me and said, hey, what if... What you, could this look like? Yeah, what could this look like if you came over here? And I was like, uh, it looked great to me. <laughs> so... Um, then it, those conversations evolved. Um, but part of it was, hey, like, I'm grabbing attention away from right. their product. So they, you know, obviously one of me. So April of 17, um, we, uh, yeah, April of 17, they hired me. We'd sign the contracts and everything. So full time, right? Yep. So 
I dream. I yeah. That's I mean, I dream. even wrote. I didn't go to college. I don't have a journalism degree. Right. I didn't go to college for that. I just developed it through working and working and working and there working it is. And trying to perfect it. I just kept going and trying to perfect it um, and trying to do the best I can with what I got, mm -hmm. um, the tools I have. And then I obviously like, you know, I haven't had editors that have helped me along the way and, and everything. But now, like, I can pound out about a four or five hundred word story pretty easily and with no mistakes or anything like that. Um Something longer, I may ask for a little help on the editing side, but that's I know my strengths and weaknesses. But anyway, it, it, it that that day that I still have the picture mm -hmm. of me signing the contract of I, I sold my business to the World Herald that I had developed, sold the business and the name and all that to them, and they hired me full time. And this took seven years. Wow. Of like, yeah, really hard work and like five, six, seven jobs <laughs> like to, that basically was those jobs were paying for this side hustle right. on its own because I was yeah. just I was funding it um, all, all on my own. So that was it was it was the key. I I will say like I ended up writing. We did, a, you know, when people get hired, they do a welcome yeah. kind of story. Ended up writing it, and the headline of it was, I think it was something like Sodder's Dream Job or something. And it was. It was all about, like, man, like, this you is You can do this I, every day, all yeah. day, and not have to <laughs> feel... Yeah, pressure and yeah, all that stuff. It's a different kind of pressure, yeah. but not, you know, not the pull of, like, family and life and all this stuff. And yeah. So it it was it was pretty cool. Like, I was, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm working here. Yeah. Right? Like this is what I get to do. And it, that story of like dream job stuff. Now that I look back at it five years later, I'm like, yeah, like at the time it was my dream job. But right now it's not. I, I can't yeah. say that. I think that's important for if students are watching this, of understanding the, the layers, the bricks that mm -hmm. are built in a career. Mm -hmm. That that first job, that first thing you create mm -hmm. is always – Stepping stones, not the maybe the right word, but it's laying a foundation for mm -hmm. for everything else that's to come. Right, right. No one, aside from my dad, who just retired of like 40, 50 years in the insurance business, no one does that anymore. Yeah, it's hard. There, you're going to have lots of different jobs, and so not that you want to have that view going into a job, but it's about skill development. Right, right. And so, one thing I want to point out to people watching is the reason that that happened that that you did that was because of relationships mm -hmm. and you're a master um you know that's a, a strength of yours is creating meaningful relationships mm -hmm. and so i think i think kids students need to understand that mm -hmm. it, at the high school level mm -hmm. like they're always trying to to get something for themselves mm -hmm. And you gotta you gotta give and not always expect to to return. You didn't know that that relationship was gonna develop in that. Hey, yeah. maybe, yeah. but that wasn't necessarily the expectation going into it. And that's really hard, even for us now, mm -hmm. uh, to continue that mindset. It's it's really hard to do. Yeah, I think I think one of the in just on the relationship hit is, um, you know, man, so many so many kids. I say kids when I say that. I mean like high school and college is so many want it now. So many want it like, where's the reward today, mm -hmm. right now? Right now, today, I want the reward for I what I want the I followers, did. I yeah. want the money. For what I did yesterday, yep. I want the reward uh, yesterday. And it doesn't work. Like, life isn't like that. Yeah, It's really hard to be like that. I think it's partly because we're so used to, like, hey, people comment and like yeah. and yeah. everything, like, right away. It's so immediate. Um but at the same time, like, is that important? Yeah, but if you can, and I, <laughs> I'm getting so much better at this. If you can, if you can just, and it's not noise, but if you can just, hey, I post this picture and all this stuff, and if you can just try to not read any comment, good, bad, indifferent, just don't read the comment. Don't look at the number of likes. Don't look at the number of views. Don't do anything like that. Just post it and let it be and see what happens. And let, and let people 
comment if they want, negative, positive, everything. Just don't respond. Just don't. Don't even read it. I'm getting better at like, hey, this is what I do. And here, boom, like, this is what I do. Here it is. If you want to comment, great. If you want to like, great. If you want to whatever, like, fine, do that. But I, I, I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah, what type of content you're posting or yeah, how I you. I mean, you, you do. You do, you do correct, need to. Correct. Because, you know, you need to look at the number. What's if working, no one's what's, following this type yeah, of content, you're not going to keep creating what's it. What's working, what's not working. But what I'm saying is there's so many negative comments and they come so quick. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, just football analogy here. So uh, quarterback throws an interception uh, in a key moment in a game. Oh, like the comments on it could be, oh, he's, he's awful. A, he's a bum. He yeah. stinks. He's terrible. Get him out of here. All this stuff. Based on that one play. But why didn't we comment when he threw the 45-yard touchdown pass um, a two drives earlier or two drives later or something like that? We yeah. don't. No. We don't say, oh, man, that was great. No, it's always the negative. You all, all you ever see is the negative. Because I think we live in a, like, 15-second time frame now. Yeah. And that's literally what social media has done. And, and I say that like when you're talking Snapchat, TikTok, all of it, and I'm on all of them, and but and I know like I need to you know be there, um, but I I think that's important just to like context matters, context definitely matters, one and two if you can it's a it's a test this is a test for everyone like this is a test post something. And wait 24 hours before you see if you get a like, a retweet, a comment. Or how many people reach. Or a share. Yeah. Yeah. Wait 24 hours before you look at it. There it it is. That's the challenge for Mike right there. For for you teachers as well. I think that's an interesting kind of approach uh, Mm -hmm. for content as well. I think also a lot of people are commenting maybe on the style or whatever. You've got to take some of that as feedback. Mm -hmm. To improve right. as sure. well. So, but it's you can't overreact in the moment with with that harsh feedback. I did. You yeah, gotta I'd be able to take constructive criticism in the digital media world. For sure. Two weeks ago, I, well, three weeks ago, I had I posted a like post game kind of quick interview thing, and I my style of like a post game quick yeah. hit interview is to ask a question without actually asking a question. <laughs> TikTok love that. They were not happy with that. <laughs> Which is so interesting. And no I one on like, Twitter has ever huh, said anything. Said like anything. That. Yeah. It's so it's different audiences, right? Yeah. And 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 it is it is a style that you can do. And it's because I want to have a conversation. Right. I don't need the like boom, like like quick, you know, hit thing. But then I realize like, huh, okay, what's the audience here? Oh yeah, they do like 10 second conversations, 15 second videos. And it needs a question. And it to needs to have a question it up. to yeah. get it going. It's it's so, you know, it's just so different. Yeah. But I that's just my style. I, I didn't let it really bother me, but I did realize like, okay, maybe I do. You need took to, it. Yeah, maybe yeah. I do need to like actually ask a little bit of a question without using the words that everybody uses. Can you talk about? Yeah, that's an awful talk cool about question. I hey, talk about how that, or um, hey, you had, you know, uh, like just sports for example, you had uh, 100 rushing yards and two can, touchdowns. Can you talk about that? Can you talk about that? <laughs> just leave that part out. Well, leave there goes the, my next question, Mike. Can you talk <laughs> about uh, some advice? Just kidding. Um, no, it's. It's really important to develop those mm-hmm. skills and always continue to improve, right? right? Always always trying new things. I think that's, that's – if anyone watches this and you kind of want to know about Mike, where he, his mind is always trying to think about what what is next and how can we improve and how can we do that. I want to go back also that attention is is the biggest thing with with what he does. He's mm-hmm. He's trying to capture people's attention. That's what the internet is trying to do. That's right. what all these social media platforms. We're trying to cap your, capture your attention through a through a different lens, right? Talk about. <laughs> 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 um, 
tell us the process that we went through that really helped you zone in. I'm going to skip through leaving yeah. the World Herald, yeah, all that stuff. You're at NEB Preps. We connect with DJ Rezac. Mm-hmm. Share about that experience yeah. of developing our mission and vision, how that really helped you zone in on how we're creating content. And I think the reason I want to bring that up is I think your class, guys, your class should have a vision for what type of content based on the skills that you're developing in your class. Don't just throw stuff at the wall all the time. Mm. You can do that to start, but then start to hone in and have a vision for your purpose at your school and developing content. And that's what we did. We were, what, six, eight months into kind of working together. Hey, Mike, you're just run the NEB prep side how you see fit. We'll kind of get out of the way and let you just take it and, and go and this can be your not a lot of direction not a lot of direction no no direction it was just like and then i thought okay i'm gonna do it kind of like i've always done which it's good to have those core things i i still you know tweet live tweet you know scores of games and still just put photos on instagram and do it i still do the core kind of basic stuff because that's just the expectation now but i try new new things um Anyway, we, we were six to eight months into it, and I remember having a conversation with you, and I said, like, I, I wasn't feeling burnt out. I was just like, what are we doing here? Yep, what are we doing? Yeah. And, and why? Yeah, I, I remember calling, like, yeah. I need a reason to not exist, but I need a reason to, like, why am I here today? Like, why am I sitting at my desk in my basement <laughs> where my office is today? what is the point? Like, it, what's the objective here? Is it just, hey, we're going to do what we can and create this thing and see what happens? Because that's what it felt like. It very much so felt like that. And I, I remember telling you, like, we need a direction. Like, what are we going to hang our hat on? Yep. And What's the difference between yeah. everyone else trying to do the yes. same thing? Like, why are we fighting this fight of doing the same thing everyone else is doing like we need to do something we need to have a like there needs to be a oh yep and there wasn't really one and then we connected with dj and um we i i talked to him because i know he he's he's great he, he's really good at um building mission statements and, and helping people with that stuff and um so we it was three hours a full morning. Yeah, three a full morning of developing a mission, vision, and values. And the mission statement is celebrate the story differently. Uh, what that means is um, not that what other people are doing is wrong because that's not the case. We just want to, we want to celebrate the story differently than the way people are doing it. Do you, like... Do you do what you've always done, but we want to be just a shade different, a little bit different. And that came through. Yeah. We we arrived on that based on us having a two hour conversation and and landing on that. And DJ really kind of went, you guys are trying to do something different. Right. Celebrate it. Yeah. And it was like three words, words. celebrate stories differently yeah i mean it, it to condense it a little bit and, and it, it was really powerful yeah and man that has just helped you zone in on mm-hmm. on everything in bringing a team together mm-hmm. now with clark who mm-hmm. left the journal star we've got, always had tony mm-hmm. and just you know some of the conversations that you've had with coaches corner it's just yeah. helped with direction the, the, quite a bit that, and i think that's huge for people to understand that are watching yeah the the celebrate the story differently is like we want to celebrate the wins we want to celebrate the losses that kids like we're talking sports right yep. so we want to celebrate the wins and losses uh we'll probably celebrate the wins more than losses so um and we want to tell the story just a little differently than the way everyone is used to and i think it's working um you know when when you when I post something, it was what last week or two weeks ago. When I posted something, um, a guy that I know really well is respected a lot in the high school football community. Sent a note and was like, "Hey, this kid mowed my oh, yeah. neighbor's yard all summer. I didn't even know he was a football player." And I'm like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Boom! That's it. Like, 
It, That's yeah. what you went to then was yeah. we just celebrated Boom, We that just celebrated the story differently and look, it yep. impacted this kid because this kid now, this coach now knows that this kid is, you know, a football player and a good yep. one and all that. So that just that's celebrating the story differently. The I mean, there's a mission, a vision, and a values, and I will tell you, I look at it every single day. Boom. All day. It is my my desk is in front of me. Or if I'm sitting at my desk in my office, computer's in front of me and it is right to the left and I could reach out and touch it probably with a little lean forward. It's about five feet in front of me. And the mission, vision, and values are all there. Mission, celebrate the story differently. Uh, vision is to have uh, 50 partners, uh, whether that's business partners or not, yep. by 2024. Uh, we might have to adjust that a little bit. And that's okay. <laughs> so, that's okay. And um, the, that's the mission, the vision, and the values is we want to build team-first relationships, which are, I think, the most important thing. Uh, with people and business partners that work with us, we want to we want them to feel a part of the team and yep. valued. Um, same thing with right now. Um, I have a student intern that's helping me, um, and he's done a fantastic job so far. and And it was very important for me to to share the mission uh, and values with him. And and one of those the team first it, thing. it created an expectation for him to go right. Oh, I've got a. Perf- yeah, I've, this is the level I've got to be team, at. Team team first relationships is is huge, and I'm making him feel a part of the team, even though he's you know student intern, high school student yep. intern, and it's I want his feedback. I want his like I want him to grow. I also want to help him too at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Um. So it, those are you know there's more to that mission, yep. vision, and values. So I I said we're already at over 30 minutes just happened like that. So I want to be, I want to kind of wrap things up with the student intern and just kind of share the, the idea that came to you with QCC. And I think it's something that teachers who are watching could implement with their, their own students. Right. And, and we are going to continue to kind of unpack that, Mm -hmm. but just high level what it is, what it means, and we'll, we'll yeah, kind of wrap yeah. up after that. So QCC is something I was, I was for the student intern that I have. I was creating, okay, I need clear expectations. I need yeah. to, I, this needs to be in writing. Um, I need to see it. He needs to see it. We all need to know what's, what the expectations are and, and, and how it's going to work. Um, and it was, I believe it was like a Monday night. I was just like, okay, I got to get this done. And we've learned and from I, that, from yes, past experience, yes, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have clear written expectations. Um, and, and it was like, okay, how am I, the student intern paid very little, if anything at all. Uh, what is it going to look like? Wh- what do I want? What do I want this student intern to um, get out of this three, six year long internship. And I was like, well, I want him to ask a lot of questions and I want to see if I can connect him with people. And then also, you know, like we're going to, we're going to develop some content. Yep. So I came up with QCC and that's what it is. Questions. Cause I want the, so student. you're interacting hi- yeah. with him on a weekly basis yeah, where he every can week, ask you questions. Yeah. Every week. And I'm, and, and every week I want him to ask me questions. You need to have two, three, four questions developed before our conversation every Wednesday at nine 30. Kind of an ask me anything yes. type thing. And yeah. maybe that's something we'll do on Strive education. If yeah. after this conversation, if, if your students have, have that. Right. So questions, connections, Hey, you might not want to be the next Mike Sauter and work 70 hours a week and be all over (laughs) Twitter and do videos and do all this stuff. You may want to be a broadcaster. You may want to be just a newspaper reporter. You may want to, um, be a photographer. Yeah. Be a photographer. You may want to, there's all kinds of different things. You may want to be a podcaster. You may want to do stuff. Guess what? I have a little bit of experience in some of those, but I'm not an expert by any means in anything. Um, so you know, I'm going to, I know, I know some people I want to connect you with, these people I already connect him with three people awesome. that he asked, Hey, this would be great to meet this person. Okay, cool. Well, here's the meeting. Okay. Next step with that is how can I give you 10 minutes with that person where you can ask them questions because they're the expert. Beautiful. Guy. And that we set that up. So that's happening. And then content obviously is, Hey, we're going to develop content and I want, he's got some games with yeah, you and I want you to, 
give me some content ideas. Hey, what do you think about doing this? Yeah. What do you think if I did this? Or what do you think if you did this and this angle and all that? And I'm also helping him. Hey, if you're going to do, if you're going to record this video, it needs to be this way. Yep. Right. You know, you're different providing things. some yeah. guidance. Yeah. It's a little huge. bit of guidance there. So that's the QCC, obviously more to it. Yep. We'll develop that plan out a little bit more, but it's, it's off to it's a really good. Point. Yeah. Well, thanks, Mike. We're going to we're gonna wrap up this conversation. Thank you guys for watching. And we hope to continue conversations like this with Mike and then also trying to line up more content creators, entrepreneurs, digital media creators that are out there doing it, making, making a living doing it and hearing their stories and then some advice for you guys as students. So a ton to take away. I would highly recommend your, your class with having a vision for what type of content you want to create based on the skills, um, learning how to deal with some negative feedback. Uh, maybe that's on your live stream or maybe someone says you've got a, a bad photo or something like that. And then implementing the QCC. I think teachers, you guys can do that, asking questions, getting them connected. And that's why we've created the community with Strive Education where you guys can ask questions, get feedback, um, and get connected with people like Mike and other content creators and then getting that repetition getting that muscle built to create content um, so that you can get better so thank you guys for watching listening wherever you may be and make it a great day i'm taylor siebert with strive education we'll talk to you guys next time